to be the collar run versus club run. And we're going to, to discuss it here like this. Let me introduce it first of all by saying good afternoon and welcome to the 46th Collar Lab Convention in Richmond, Virginia. Today, of course, is April the 15th, and this is the session of Collar Run versus Club Run. I'll be your moderator. I'm, I'm Paul Hensey out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm going to be serving as the moderator, and we're going to have two good panelists. One is from Munich, Germany, which is Julie Burr. And then on my left-hand side is Al Stevens. And Al had just come back from the overseas, and he's now in Montgomery, Alabama. And, of course, the etiquette is to have who first? Which one do you want? The girl first, right? Yeah, she's kicking me underneath the table, so I guess we'll start with the girls first, okay? So keep this in mind. Here's how Colorado wrote it up for us. More and more clubs are closing primarily because no one wishes to commit to being the officers of the club. What can callers do to ensure clubs continue to operate? So the panel's premise that they're working from is to present some ideas on how clubs can operate also as caller run. Now, we want you to be sure to participate if you've got situations that you're either in a caller run or a club run. Hold your hand up. Let us know because we're also on video with this too and we're probably put this out to a lot of people on the outside because a lot of clubs right now are really fighting where they go from here. So without further ado, Julie, you've got the floor. Thanks, Paul. So, caller run versus club run. The definition for me is that a caller run club means the caller is running the club. A club run club or a committee run club means you have a board, the president, vice, treasurer, secretary, and all kind of other positions. So, to give you an overview what my thoughts to that topic there is we will talk about the definition, what is what, then we will check out the advantages and disadvantages to each system. I want to give you a short overview of what is the situation in Europe, especially in Germany, and what could be an alternative solution. We have on the one hand side a committee run club means the board leads the club. Like I said, you have president, vice, treasurer, secretary, and other positions, like maybe a youth representative, or the webmaster, or a travel coordinator. Of course, the more positions you want to fill, the more volunteers you need to do that job and do the work. And depending on how big the club is, it might be that half of your club is in the board. It means also the board makes all the decisions like when do we dance, which week of which day of the week, what time we are dancing, are we in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, where do we dance? It means also when you lose your dancing place, and it happens quite often, maybe because the pub owner wants suddenly a hall rent, or the hall rent you're paying goes up or the building gets closed, or there is some statics problem, and the city says, no, that building is not safe anymore for people, or the owner changes and they don't want a dance club in there, or your people are not consuming enough food and beverage. So there are all kinds of reasons why a club needs to find a new dance location. But that's the responsibility of the board. It's also decided by the board how often you dance, once a week, twice a week, once a month. How much does the caller get paid? And what to do? Do we do a class? Do we run workshops? On the other side, you have the caller run club, and that is simply a one-man show. Everything what I explained, what the board is deciding, is now decided by the caller. And that brings us to the advantages and disadvantages. First I thought, okay, everything what's an advantage for one system is the disadvantage of the other, but it's not quite that way. For a collar run club, the advantages are that all decisions are laying the few as the collar. That means 
I can make the decision short notice, I can be very quickly. There is no bureaucracies to deal with, like calling in a committee meeting and having to vote and maybe have to go to the members and have a members be, uh, voting on it. It's all decided by me. I'm the caller and I decide what I think is best. There will be also no elections. That means you don't have to think, oh, okay, four weeks in advance, I need to send out these letters and blah, 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 blah. No, we just don't have it. You're dealing directly with outside organizations like the pub owner, maybe like the music licensing offices. Also, the people who want to hire the club for dancing uh, a demo, we would say. Maybe somebody comes and says, hey, can you dance at our wedding? It's much easier to say, okay, all the organization goes, 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 goes to me. There are no long debates and all the profits go directly to the call. That means if you make a profit. The disadvantages, all the expenses are also covered by you. So if you have a miscalculation, guess what? It's coming out of your pocket. It's a lot of work to do. Everything I mentioned before, organizing the hall, organizing flyers, dealing with music licensing, everything depends on you. And it comes down to even having the phone number of the facility manager of the building, that in case you have a water damage, it's your responsibility. It also means that you have a kind of lack It's a lack of advice because you have to think about, I need to go out to my club members and ask for the advice because there's no responsibility of giving the advice. If I'm running in a board, everybody has kind of an obligation to put their five piece of mind in. But if I don't have that, if I don't know the answer, I need to find the answer. And I might not get it as quickly as I wish for. It's also very easy to get in a rut. If I'm always thinking in one linear thought, then this will be the way the club goes. There will be no new ideas coming in necessarily. Like I said, if I don't ask for it, I will not get that ideas and I will not get that advice. If I can't go to that dance, I need to find the replacement. It's my responsibility. And I need a lot of knowledge. I need to know in Germany about GEMA, what's the music licenses. Here it's BMI ASCAP and CSEC now. So you need to know about that. You need to know about bookkeeping and how it's done. You need to know how to involve it in your taxes. Is the club responsible for paying taxes? It depends on how much money the club makes. And a certain situation in Germany is also religious holidays. We have holidays where you're not allowed to dance, simply because of the Catholic Church has so much influence. And I have to know that. Because if I don't, and I get caught, then they're coming after me, they're not coming after the club. For a committee run club, the advantages is that the workload is shared. It's a shared responsibility. The, when I'm the president, I can delegate a lot of the stuff to my vice, to the treasurer, to the secretary. So everybody is carrying a part of the load of work. And people like to have the feeling of being in control. That means if I have members in the club, and on the one hand side, they like, yeah, okay, I don't have to worry about anything. The caller will decide it. But on the other hand, if you never ask them what they want and you just decide, they're not happy. People want to have a kind of influence of what's going on with my club. 
and you get different ideas for problem solving matters. The expenses are also taken care of by the club. If the club runs into the minus, it's the club's responsibility. It's not coming out of my private pocket. The disadvantages are that the decisions might take longer because there will be long debates, there will be meetings, there will be board meetings, there will be membership meetings that need to be organized, and it's a much more detailed bookkeeping. The situation in Europe is there's only a few caller run clubs. In general, we are running committee run clubs, means that the board. Main reason is we have people who are very much think the value of the work and knowledge is shared. They, they don't necessarily like that the caller is telling them what to do. They want to have part of control. They want to have the influence. And the other thing is we have a rotating caller system. That means I might not be the only club caller. It might be that I have one, two, three club callers and everyone is doing only one night a month. So there it goes down that you can't have a caller run club because then you have a four caller run club and then I can call that a board. An alternative, alternative solution would be maybe that one position in the board cannot be filled. Means maybe there is nobody who wants to take care of the president's job or the vice president's job. Then me as caller, I can say, okay, for a limited of time, maybe till we find somebody who's suitable, I can fill that gap. Instead of saying, oh, we are dissolving the club because we don't have a completely board. Because turning a caller run club into a, club, a committee run club is easy. Turning a committee run club into a caller run club is not so easy. If I want to start a club, I can do it as caller run club. And then if I see, okay, I have enough people and they're willing to, to share the work, then I can turn it into a committee run club. But if I don't have a president or vice, it might be that the decision on the annual membership meeting will be, well, if we can't fill that position, the club will fold down. And instead of letting that happen, I, as caller, might have to go in and say, I take over for one period. The only thing I would advise is, don't accept the treasurer's position. Simple by the fact, it's a conflict of interest. And the other thing, be aware of, stay out of decisions involving the caller's fee. Same reason, conflict of interest. Any questions? We have a mic here that I walk around. Let me ask a question before Julie asks uh, any, anything else. By show of hands, how many in here now are operating through a club run situation? One, two, three, four, five out of uh, out of ten people. Okay. So the others are club run, or you're looking towards something of one nature or the other? I thought we do both. The end of the session. Do you, we do so you're trying to find out which way is that you might could operate? I actually, I actually do both. Okay. So we've got about half and half. Okay. I have my own dance hall. Let me walk this around just so we can get back on the mic. Be sure here as we're going around here to state your name and then of course where you're from. Mike, you had, you had one first. Yeah, I'm Mike, uh, an American in Germany. Uh, I do have a committee run club, my main club in Kaiserslautern, in Germany, Ramstein here based. Um, but as a matter of fact, the club's having some problems. There were some personality issues. We've lost a couple of people. During the meeting, the president said, Mike, I can't take this anymore. And I said, well, let me take over. She says, what do you mean? I said, I can take over and make this a caller run club. You didn't want to be president when the previous president resigned? No, I just did it because nobody else wanted it, and I just can't take this anymore. And I said, then let's just turn it in. We haven't done it yet, though. This just happened before I came over here. So 
we're looking at that, and that's in particular why I'm here today. Megan, where are you from? Elaine McKenna's Gloversville, New York. Um, a lot of people in our area did not want uh, clubs anymore. They didn't want to be president, stuff like that. So I stepped up and I bought a church and created my own collar run place. And uh, so it's worked out so far. We've been there eight years now. And uh, like she says, we we'll make all the decisions. I'm with my partner, Dennis Viscani. He's the cure. So we do the dances together. We have uh, Mike Sikorsky come in and do some collar schools at our place. We have other collars come in. We invite people to come. and. Uh, so far, so good. We're trying to grow the area membership-wise. I mean, for dancers, just to recultivate New York State. Um, so, that's it. Steve Green, uh, yeah. Steve Green, uh, Monroe, North Carolina. My wife is a caller. Um, she calls for a couple of club-run clubs. And obviously in the environment that we're in, and uh, you're seeing less and less people in there, and they don't want to step up to be active. And so I got railroaded into being the president of a club, of which you, you mentioned about, you know, I was like, I don't want anything to do with the money, I don't want to be anywhere near that. Uh, it's definitely a conflict of interest, you want to be, make sure you separate yourself from that. But, I mean, rather than let these clubs die on the vine because they can't fill these positions, and I'm sure plenty of you have seen that happen when a club goes away, they, uh, they stop dancing. They don't go to another club. They just stop, which is crazy. So, yeah, we're probably going to see it where the callers are going to wind up having to take these clubs and be more active. Julia, go ahead. Any more things? What did you say? Do you have anything you want to add? Nope. I give over to Al. Any other questions of Julia before she finishes? Okay. Mr. Al Stevens. Can you make it? Um, when I first arrived in, in Germany, it was 1978, uh, they did not have a problem with music at that time. When it came time for the German version of BMI and ASCAP, uh, it's called GEMA, so I'll use that acronym. Uh, for music licensing. When they raised their ugly heads, the Callers Association, unlike here in America, took the bull, bull by the horns. And uh, we, we, as, a, as, a, uh, as an organization, negotiated the contract between Square Dance Calling and BMI and NASCAP. Everybody knows that, right? In Germany, the Dancers Association took that initiative when, when they raised their ugly head. Uh, that told me right off the bat, the minute I saw that, that uh, if I wanted to run a dance myself and hire a caller to come in, a caller coach, to come in and do my, my caller schools uh, and have a dance in conjunction with that, I would have to have a club sponsor that particular dance, otherwise I could not get coverage to use music in Germany, okay? Um, when I first got there, I resided in an area that didn't have a club. So I went out and uh, did my politicking around town, talking to various people and various organizations and whatnot, told them of my interest to, to run a class. The results of that class, I had 76 people ready to form a club. 
None of those people had any idea what square dancing was all about. They had no idea of, that there was a sister organization called the uh, Dancers Association. They had no idea of the terminology we as callers knew as special dances or jamborees. They had no idea that they existed, okay? So what I did was I created a scenario and I talked it over with the people at first that I would accept the responsibility of organizing a club and having it call a run only for a period of three years to give those people enough time to get acclimated to what the activity is all about, then they can make a decision if they want it to be a board-run club or not. Then I found myself in uh, 1978, Caller Lab came up and we, we identified the PLUS program. All of a sudden, people wanted to learn PLUS in a location that had three cities close by that had a lot of square dancers. But there was no PLUS club or organization to dance in, at the PLUS level and to learn PLUS. And the in, in Germany, they also have a, a very strict uh, if, if you're a mainstream club, you don't call plus tips. You don't, you don't call it a, a program. They weren't when I left. <laughs> They're becoming more and more like us. Take a hint. <laughs> look, look at the path it, we're, we, we're on. Um, it, it changed now. So it's more and more coming usual that if a club has dancers or enough dancers who dance uh, a different program, what's programmed out for that night, that they would come to the caller and say, hey, can you do a plus tip? And then it's down to the board again to decide yes or no, is it okay? But if I have a caller run club, I can make that decision very easy and say, yeah, sure, why not? Let me ask you a question of both of you. Did, did any of you mention liability? You know, we in the States, we have to worry about liability too. How did you handle your liability there? I don't know that word. Liability insurance. Insurance. For sale. For sale. Yeah. Um, the insurance comes normally either through EWSDC, the Dancers Organization, what comes up now is also that the sports clubs are offering also that we have square dance activities covered by the local sports clubs organizations. So what you can do is, if you say, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to become an EWSDC, a dance organization club, um, club, you can go to your sports association and ask if you can be a department under their dance department. They maybe have standard dancing, Latin dancing. You can say, I can offer square dance lessons, and I, and by this way, the treasury stuff would go away, and the sports club would handle that, and the insurance would be covered through the sports club, and they would cover also the music licensing. Does that answer your question? Yes. I'll go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, in, in this area of uh, three, three cities, it was Stuttgart, Karlsruhe, and uh, Heidelberg, were in, uh, fairly close. Uh, <clears throat> I founded a PLUS group, offered a PLUS class, and we called it uh, just a, a group, a plus group. Uh, and in order to get the, the uh, proper license to, to uh, use music there, 
I had to form a collar run plus group, okay? So I went to the Dancers Association for help and they said, you gotta build yourself, a, make yourself a constitution. The constitution has to have this, 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 and you have to identify board positions within this club or this group. So I said, okay, I can do that. And I, I put down uh, the, the board, uh, or the, this club should, uh, will have the following board positions, president, vice president, secretary, and others as assigned by, by the caller. And uh, I went on further to explain that the caller will fill all positions. That was the only way that I could get my constitution approved by EAASTC to make my caller run plus group a reality. And we stayed together for about 14 years until uh, my ex-wife uh, gave birth to our baby who was now 13 years old. And I felt obligated to, uh, since she had her own business to run and whatnot, I, I obligated to fold my plus group. And uh, catered to the baby so that she could have a night off. And uh, in doing so, the, the plus in, in that general area uh, faded. Now, um, board run clubs, uh, when it came time for my call to run mainstream groups to make a decision, uh, some of them made a decision to become board run. And they went on and, and are still in, in, ex in existence today. There's one in Heidelberg, there's one in Offenburg, there's one in uh, calls from uh, Fortsheim. Um, but generally, uh, the uh, hmm. the difference between a call to run club and, the, and a board run club was adequately uh, displayed by by Julie. And uh, anybody have any questions on? What I did when? I agree, my friend. Hi, I'm Mike Poe from California. Um, really, I don't have a question about how it was done in Germany, but um, more about how we would set something up as a caller run club in the States. Uh, getting to the liability question that you brought up, um, do you recommend? Would you recommend in the States that the caller run club become a corporation or a? Uh, you know, for liability purposes, is that required, or is it desired, or is it not desirable at all? I'll, I'll let Paul answer that, because my, my uh, experience in the States is nil. I, I came back here four years ago. I called uh, full-time in, in Germany, but I just returned. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to that myself. My experience here in the, in the I'm out of the Tennessee area of my boys, I'm sure, <laughs> that uh, if you've got a state organization, you go to them and they become your sponsoring arm and you tell them what your intentions would be, club run or caller run, they don't fight the issue. If you want to do a caller run, then fine, you can go through them for your insurance. That's what we did. And I think it's still two, three dollars a person, does that sound like over your ear, but the same thing. Uh, it's been the same standard insurance that's been available for all the clubs before this. So that's what we have done in our area. Now, let me ask you a quick, is another question? Yeah. Well, you don't need it. So you don't need anything more than the insurance that we would get through like USDA? Well, you also need, of course, your BMI, ASCAP. Right. You need that also for that to insurance uh, situations. Do, does everyone understand what the the insurance that you're asking for for your liability insurance is for if a person walks in your door trips and falls whose fault is it 
collar run club, whose fault is it? Collar it's the collar. collar. It's the club run. It's the club. So you, all you're doing is you're helping yourself through the next <coughs> to stop that problem. Uh, and you just, this day and time, you know people. Okay? Good question. Any others? Any others? Let me ask you another question right there. You were talking about, or I should ask the people that are in here, how many again are, are collar run clubs now? All right. Let me kind of start here in the back if I can. Tell me how you got to be a collar run club. Your name, please. My name is Debbie Prescott. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, one, we inherited. The club wanted to continue as a club with the name because the name had been in Anchorage for a long time. And one more. I can't hear you. That's not a bad thing. Um, <laughs> nobody ever says that. I'm here to tell you. Um, the other one is a collar run because when we first we got it. Um, there was not that particular, we started the PLUS program, we didn't have that. And we had plenty of callers at the time, right now the state only has a couple callers. But we run uh, both groups as caller run at this point. Nobody wanted to be members of the officers or anything anymore anyway. One of the things that we do a little different than other places is we didn't want to have the only say, we just wanted to have a say in how things were handled. So by being call a run, we still run everything by everybody else. We don't just unilaterally make decisions, say, okay, we're gonna do this and you know, you know, live with it. And everybody helps us. We don't have any problem with that. Um, we run the treasury, but we set aside money for specifically for the club activities. And it all seems to work out real well. Um, we have the USDA insurance. And up until recently, the callers were not allowed to have a position on the area council or the state federation. Those rules have been changed because, oh look, there weren't any people to be on those positions anymore. So we have made some changes there at the request of the dancers. So it's all rather interesting and we're still a work in progress. But we are still dancing, which was the whole point for us. All right, who else is a caller run? Let me start here. I'll that. How did you get to be a caller run? Uh, Ned Newberg from Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I started in the, I started a plus workshop about 20 years ago in Vegas. They didn't have one, and they were. Everything was running vanilla, and they wanted multiple ideas of what was going on, so I ended up starting this group, and for the first five years, it didn't break even. So I ended up paying for it, but it eventually grew into something that now pays me to do it. Uh, I do everything with it, um, you know, but I keep, I like everyone else, I ask what they want, what they're looking for, what... You know, they go to they go to a, a state festival or something. Somebody did this. Why did they get away with it? And I, you know, and then I get to explain it to everybody in great detail and keep them dancing, and so that they can go to these festivals and not be surprised. Um, I also just recently inherited a group when they just decided to. Um, dropped the name of the club, but they wanted to keep dancing. So the club actually folded, and we're still doing the same thing on Thursday night, but it's a mainstream group but the same way. And I'm trying to work, I'm working on that one to figure out what they really want. So I give them what they want, they keep coming back. Car. Well, when I first became a caller, it was very hard, you know, just to get a job as a caller, especially for me as a woman. And the local clubs, you know, they all want your experience first and stuff like that. So I started uh, doing lessons for a club that didn't have lessons. And then did that for six years and got myself into the local area. And uh, still, the local clubs would only hire 
you know, maybe once or twice a year, you know. And so to me, I wanted to work. I want to be a caller. And uh, there aren't many around our area. So I think, well, let me just, you know, I talk with other people. They say, just start your own. So I said, well, how do you do that? She said, just get a building, whatever, and just start, you know. So, and uh, I had just talked to a lot of different people, other callers around who, you know, helped me just, you know, do a tip here and there. And like, how do you do it? I just did a lot of research like that. And uh, I was at Tic Tac Toes buying shoes. That's a dance company in Gloversville. And uh, right around the corner, I was, uh, there was a stop sign. There was a for sale sign. And there was a church there. And I said, okay, it's about the size of a barn, you know, public parking right there. Looks good. Fenced in yard for my dog. Okay. So it was for sale. So I said, yeah, let's look at it. And I looked at other different places. Um, I wanted to get closer to my own hometown, but other people bought all the churches and stuff like that, so I had to move outside my city. And, um, but we turned it, we built the floor ourselves, you know, with these hands who just had home economics and junior high, and, <laughs> and uh, we did a good job at it, and we turned one third of it into our living area, so we lived there. So it's like, in my old age, I just want to open the door, and I'm walking to it, I'm right there. And uh, so we're the central point for everybody. I want people to come to us. You know, we go out and dance with everybody, but we also want to reciprocate and invite callers. If you want to call at our place, you're welcome to. We'll build a dance around you. We do it with uh, themes every month. And um, we keep people coming in like that because we get to the hobbies of what people like. You know, if they're into trains, oh, we do a train dance. You know, if they're into cars and trucks, we do a car and truck dance. And there's a lot of music all around it, so it keeps our music fresh. But um, to me, I just started because I wanted to work, and I had to make my own jobs. Let me ask the callers that are doing the caller run clubs, how do you do your sociability to teach your dancers, and how do you do your halfway dances, or do you have a halfway dance? Every day. My name is Elaine McKenna's again from Gloversville, New York. And um, so our social ability, we start, our dances are usually on the weekends, Sundays or Saturdays. And uh, from 12 to 1, it's a workshop. Anybody who walks through the front door can come and learn a little square dancing. Or we teach the lowest level of whoever. And like I said, we have our partner, uh, Dennis Visconti, we can do round dancing in that first hour, whatever you want. From 1 to 2, we eat. <coughs> It's a potluck dinner every time. Remember, I bought a church building, so we have the social room, and I decorate it all full tilt, all right, whatever theme. Next month is our Cinco de Mayo dance, so I'm already decorated, okay, for that. <coughs> and uh, so we take that time to socialize, because so often you don't have that in regular square dances. You're always rushing on the floor, you're dancing so far, or people are sitting way over and across the side of them. We definitely take the time to socialize. And then from 2 to 4.30, it's a regular square and uh, round dance, mainstream and plus. And we have the refreshments there all the time, and people can socialize like that. Then afterwards, we can either all go out to dinner again or go karaoke or something like that. I mean, it's like the party continues with our friends. And I think that's the one thing that we got to, one person mentioned that earlier, keeping those friendships active. That's what keeps the people coming back to your dances. Go out to dinner with them. Do what they like to do, whether it's you know, uh, karaoke or travel with them. I know people love to do that together. Carpool with somebody to the dance. It's all those small things that people really appreciate like that. What was the question again? 